हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल दिस इज मेडिकल लिंक एंड आई एम डॉक्टर प्रशांत गुप्ता एंड टुडे विल बी डिस्कसिंग ऑन अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट चैप्टर दैट इज हेमोलाइटिक एनीमिया सो लेट स्टार्ट सो व्हाट इज हेमोलाइटिक एनीमिया सो हेमोलाइटिक एनीमिया इज एन एनीमिया रिजल्टिंग फ्रॉम एन इंक्रीज इन द रेट ऑफ रेड सेल डिस्ट्रक्शन सो इन दिस एनीमिया देर इज इंक्रीज इन द रेट ऑफ रेड आरबीसी डिस्ट्रक्शन so the normal life span of rbc normal life span of rbc is 120 days we know that normal life span of rbc is 120 days but in case of hemolytic anemia the life span of rbc is 10 to 20 days in case of hemolytic anemia the life span of rbc is only 10 to 20 days so what are the characteristic feature of hemolytic anemia in hemolytic anemia there is premature destruction of rbc so when there is a premature destruction of red blood cell to compensate the loss of rbc there will be increase in erythropoietin level and erythropoiesis in the bone marrow will increase so there will be increase in erythropoietin level and increase in erythropoiesis in the bone marrow so as to compensate the loss of rbc this will result in increased reticulocyte count this will result in increased reticulocyte count what is reticulocyte so it is the response of the bone marrow to anemia caused by increased destruction of red blood cell this will result in increased indirect bilirubin which will result in jaundice so there is increased premature destruction of red blood cell now so as to compensate so as to compensate the loss of red blood cell there is increased erythropoietin level and increased erythropoiesis in the bone marrow and this will cause increase in reticulocyte count and this will result in increase in indirect bilirubin which will result in jaundice so these are the characteristic feature of hemolytic anemia so there are two types of hemolytic anemia one is intravascular hemolytic anemia and the other is extra vascular hemolytic anemia as the name suggest intra there is increased destruction of red blood cell inside the blood vessel whereas in extra vascular hemolysis as the name suggest extra that is outside the blood vessel so there is increased destruction of red blood cell outside the blood vessel like spleen liver and bone marrow and extra vascular hemolysis this extra vascular hemolysis is more common than intravascular hemolysis so extra vascular is more common whereas intravascular is less common in intravascular hemolysis red blood cell destruction occurs in the peripheral blood in intravascular hemolysis rbc destruction or red blood cell destruction occurs in peripheral blood whereas in extra vascular hemolysis rbc destruction will occur in reticulo endothelial system in reticulo endothelial system like spleen liver and bone marrow so so in intra vascular hemolysis you will see hemoglobinemia hemoglobinuria hemosiderinuria meth hemoglobinemia and meth hemoglobinuria all these will be seen in case of intravascular hemolysis and there is also a mild increase in indirect bilirubin and serum ldh level will be increased so what are the examples of intravascular hemolysis intravascular hemolysis can be seen in paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria g6pd deficiency you can see it in clostridial toxin in falciparum malaria mechanical injury to red blood cell now coming to extra vascular hemolysis hemoglobinemia hemoglobinuria hemosiderinuria and meth hemoglobinemia all these will be absent because there is no free hemoglobin that is released in the circulation so there is no free hemoglobin released in the circulation so hemoglobinemia is not seen hemoglobinuria hemosiderinuria and meth hemoglobinemia all these will not be seen in case of extra vascular hemolysis and because the rbc destruction is occurring in the reticulo endothelial cell you will see anemia and increased jaundice splenomegaly 
because there is increased destruction in the spleen hepatomegaly because there is increased destruction in the liver as well and serum LTH level will be mildly increased so what are the examples of extravascular hemolysis so extravascular hemolysis can be seen in hereditary spherocytosis thalassemia sickle cell anemia autoimmune hemolytic anemia and G6PD deficiency so we see here in G6PD deficiency you can see both intravascular as well as extravascular so in G6PD deficiency you can see both intravascular as well as extravascular hemolytic anemia now we'll talk about what are the mechanism of these findings seen in case of intravascular hemolysis so now we are going to discuss about the exclusive findings of intravascular hemolytic anemia so when intravascular hemolysis occurs there is increased destruction there is premature destruction of rbc so there is rbc lysis when rbc is destroyed this rbc will release it will release heme it will release hemoglobin and it will release ldh this heme this heme will be converted to indirect bilirubin so there will be increase in indirect bilirubin which will result in jaundice okay now this destroyed rbc will also cause the release of ldh so you will see more ldh in the serum so there will be increase in serum ldh rbc lysis can also cause the release of hemoglobin remember when hemoglobin is within the rbc then it is non-toxic when hemoglobin is within the rbc then it is non-toxic but when the hemoglobin comes outside the rbc into the blood then it becomes toxic so this is known as hemoglobinemia so there will be increase in hemoglobinemia which is toxic form so this toxic hemoglobin has to be removed from the blood so increase in toxic hemoglobin can result in hemoglobinuria which is removed by the kidney and some hemoglobin may degrade in the renal tubules to form hemosiderin so this will result in hemosiderinuria and this toxic hemoglobin also binds to haptoglobin which is present in the peripheral blood which is synthesized by the liver and this will be cleared by monocyte macrophage system so this complex hemoglobin haptoglobin will be cleared by monocyte macrophage system which will result in decrease in the serum haptoglobin which will be moderate to severe decrease in serum haptoglobin will be moderate to severe now this hemoglobinemia or this toxic hemoglobin can also be converted into meth hemoglobinemia meth hemoglobinemia is a non toxic form and these are excreted in the urine thus resulting in meth hemoglobinuria so we see that there are eight exclusive findings of intravascular hemolysis so it is easy to remember if you know the mechanism so intravascular hemolysis causes rbc lysis which will release him which will be converted to indirect bilirubin and this will present as jaundice rbc lysis can also cause the release of ldh which will cause increase in serum ldh this rbc lysis can also release toxic hemoglobin because when the hemoglobin is inside the rbc it is non toxic non toxic and when it comes outside the rbc into the blood it becomes toxic so this toxic hemoglobin has to be removed from the body so this toxic hemoglobin is removed by the kidney resulting in hemoglobinuria some hemoglobin may degrade in renal tubule to form hemosiderin which will present as hemosiderinuria and in the peripheral blood this toxic hemoglobin will combine with haptoglobin which is synthesized by the liver and will be cleared by monocyte macrophage system and finally there will be decrease in serum haptoglobin this toxic form of hemoglobin can also be converted into meth hemoglobin 
which will present as methemoglobinemia which is a non toxic form and this will be excreted in the urine which will present as methemoglobin urea so this is an overview of exclusive finding that is seen in case of intravascular hemolysis now after understanding the mechanism it will be easy for us to understand the findings of intravascular and extravascular hemolysis so we'll revise it once again so in intravascular hemolysis there is destruction of rbc inside the blood so there will be hemoglobinemia hemoglobin urea hemocytrin urea methemoglobinemia methemoglobin urea so all this will be present as well as there will be increased in uh, indirect form or unconjugated bilirubin and there will also be increase in serum ldh level in case of extravascular hemolysis as the rbc destruction is occurring in the reticuloendothelial system there will be no free hemoglobin released in the circulation so these findings like hemoglobinemia hemoglobin urea hemosiderin urea and methemoglobinemia will be absent instead there will be anemia and jaundice splenomegaly hepatomegaly so this was the overall view of hemolytic anemia i hope you have understood the topic thank you and see you in another video